Hi. Hello. All right, it is time, ladies and gentlemen, for the end of year album ranking. This is for 2021, of course, the year that just happened. I'm going to be giving my top 15 albums of the year here, but I'm going to be doing something a little bit different for this as well, because I feel like lots of people are going to be doing these types of videos, especially at this time of the year. So after I list each album, I'm going to be looking at Pitchfork, which is everybody's favorite music review site, as we know. Yes, the same Pitchfork that famously gave the Peppa Pig album a higher score than Donda. Yes, you heard that right. Once again, it was a great year for music, so if your favorite album of the year is not on here, just keep in mind that there was a ton of good and great albums that came out this year. Obviously, I haven't listened to every single album that came out this year. That's, like, impossible. But we're gonna start off with number 15 here, which, speaking of Peppa Pig, speaking of Donda, I have Donda at number 15. Uh, Kanye West, of course, this is the follow-up to Jesus is King, an album that a lot of people didn't love, um, but this one, a lot of people loved, and including myself. I didn't like it on a first listen, I must admit, but it has grown on me probably the most out of any of the albums on this list. The release for this album was absolutely insane too with all the listening party, the live events, um, him delaying it, him thinking it would never drop. It was definitely entertaining to see the rollout of this album. Um, and like I said, I was disappointed at first, but it has grown on me like crazy. I think there is still a lot of not so great tracks on here. Like of course, television um, is absolutely awful. Um, and some other ones that I'm not a big fan of, like Remote Control, but there is a lot of highlights on here as well, like Come to Life, which has grown to be one of my favorite Kanye songs ever, probably. Um, it has Off the Grid, of course, which is probably top 10 in Songs of the Year for me. Playboy Cardi kills it, the, the beat is insane. Kanye kills it, 504 in, kills it as well. Believe What I Say with the Lauryn Hill sample, 24 Moon, all great tracks. Um, and I think it is bloated, it is imperfect, but I think there's enough highlights on there that it lands on this list. And of course, uh, Pitchfork gave Kanye West Donda a six. I mean, that's honestly not terrible compared to what we'll see in this video because, I mean, I think I gave Kanye's uh, album a six for my review as well. I'd say it's definitely higher than that now, but it's not the worst thing ever. It's just really the fact that Peppa Pig somehow got a 6.5. Hello, Pitchfork, what are we doing? At number 14, we have Juno by Remy Wolf. I actually just got into Remy Wolf this year, thanks to Fantano. And this is just a great album full of some fun, colorful pop music. The production is great. She's got a great voice. Um, hilarious lyrics and writing throughout. Just a really fun and entertaining, colorful album. Super catchy, great vocals, colorful production. And yeah, this just it's just a fun listen. I'm really excited to see what Remy Wolf is gonna make going forward because I believe she dropped an album before this this year too. Um, and I really liked that as well. Uh, she's got a lot of talent. Favorite tracks from this are probably Anthony Kiedis, What You Doing, W.I.D., uh, Gorilla, and Sexy Villain. And uh, Remy Wolf's Juno got a seven on Pitchfork, which, I mean, it's not terrible. I might've given a little bit higher, but Pitchfork isn't coming through with the, the worst score so far. Uh, I feel like seven is, is a fitting score for Remy Wolf's Juno. Great album. Coming in at number 13, we have Paris, Texas with Boy Anonymous. I, this is their breakout album that they released this year. Uh, they did release a project after this, but it was kind of more of like an EP. I think this was more of a complete album from the the, the hip hop rap duo. Um, these guys are super talented. I love what they bring. I love how they kind of combine elements of hip hop and rap with rock. I mean, we've seen people do it before, but I feel like they do it in a way that's super tasteful and it just goes over super well. Um, I love the production throughout on this. There is some iffy lines here and there, but there also is some hilarious lines as well. There's some catchy hooks, great production, like I said, and it's just a really exciting project from an exciting duo coming up in the scene. Favorite tracks from this are Heavy Metal and Force of Habit. Those are some great singles. Pitchfork actually didn't review this album because I feel like it is more of a unknown release. I mean, it's not the most like underground thing ever, but they didn't review it. Um, Fantano didn't review it either. So uh, yeah, I guess you'll just have to take my word for it. It's, it's pretty good. All right, coming in at number 12 here, we have Injury Reserve with By The Time I Get To Phoenix. This album is wildly experimental and this was actually my introduction to injury reserve which may not have been the best album to be introduced to them as but it has grown on me i didn't really like it at first but I it just took a little bit of getting used to because like i said it is very experimental it's very out there 
um, and it's also very depressing as well obviously coming after the the passing of one of their members grogs of course which is just devastating um, and it's it's really interesting to hear them go into certain aspects and topics of grief that I've never really heard before in songs like the track Top Picks For You which is obviously a track about how the algorithm continues to feed um, someone things even once they've passed away because obviously it's an algorithm it's a computer it doesn't know that they're gone which is that song was really depressing um, the production on here is great I think Richie's rapping is amazing for a lot of this and Grogs has some features or not features some verses on here as well which go over really well and uh, favorite tracks from this are SS San Francisco, Wild Wild West, and Knees. Pitchfork gave this a 7.7, .7, which I feel like is a little bit disrespectful. I mean, we know Anthony Fantano gave it a 9, but I don't know. I feel like it deserves a little bit higher than that. I've never really heard anything that sounds like this. Um, the production is groundbreaking, and I think uh, it's just a really well put together project with some great writing as well. Uh, so 7.7, .7, yeah, that's a... Uh, that's disrespectful. All right, coming in at number 11, we have JPEG Mafia's LP. I really just got into Peggy this year more and more. I listened to Veteran earlier. I still need to listen to All My Heroes or Cornballs, but between Veteran and LP, this is the better one, in my opinion. Um, great and varied production on this. Uh, a lot of the songs feel very distinct and very different. Um, obviously, it's got that kind of experimental edge, but it also has some very catchy hooks as well. I feel like there's a lot of catchy aspects in the melodies and the synths and stuff going on in these tracks. So it's not too experimental where it just completely turns you off from enjoying it. It's still very enjoyable. Some great rapping. I love some, some lines on here from Peggy. And you can definitely feel the anger with this dude on this album. He is an angry, hungry um, man on this record. And uh, I just think it's really good. It has some of my favorite Peggy tracks overall. Um, some of my favorite on this album are Rebound, OG, and Sick, Nervous, and Broke. I think those three tracks are absolutely amazing. Uh, Rebound is probably one of my favorite tracks of the year. I just love, Peggy just absolutely goes in on that track and the production is great. Yeah, this, this album is great. Um, I really love this thing. Pitchfork gave this a 7.3, which once again feels a little bit disrespectful for such a well-rounded project. Like overall, it's just, there's no really aspect of it that is bad in my opinion. So I don't know where this 7.3 is coming from. It's a little disrespectful, Pitchfork. Coming in at number 10, we have Black Country New Roads for the first time. This is their first album, of course. This, this band comes from the kind of post-punk scene as well as Black Midi and Squid. Um, over in the UK. So they have a lot of talent. Um, I don't even know how many members it is, but it's it seems like a lot. There's a lot of different instruments going on. Um, it took me a little bit to get into this guy's vocals because they are very dramatic and very different. Um, but once you get into them, I think you can, you can really enjoy them. The, the writing is very interesting. I don't know if I've heard writing like this before. Um, it's very like kind of depressing, but very like obsessive about certain like little things in his life um it's just it's very strange writing but i think it's it's very intriguing at the same time like i said the vocals i got used to the song structures are really intriguing the writing is great uh the instrumentation is great like i said they're very talented um i love just it's 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 only like seven tracks i believe but the album just flows really well the songs never get boring in my opinion. The favorite, my favorite tracks from this are probably Science Fair and Sunglasses. Overall, just a great album from Black Country New Road. Can't see, can't wait to see what they have coming after this. Pitchfork gave this a 7.4. Um, I feel like a lot of these, these Pitchfork scores are kind of disrespectful for like a lot in the sevens here. Like I would definitely give this probably a nine. In my opinion, this album is great. Pitchfork is on something, bro. They're they're strange, bro. All right, coming in at number nine, we have Genesis Owuso with Smiling With No Teeth. I found out about this, of course, from Fantano. Uh, but this actually became one of my favorite albums of the year. It's it's a great mixture of jazz, funk, soul. Um, there's some obvious Kendrick, T-Pab influence, some, some Kanye influence as well. And I like the writing throughout as well, um, using the black dog as a metaphor for his depression. Of course, there's lots of great imagery in these lyrics. And I'm just a big fan of the grooves, the the hooks, the melodies, the just the instrumentation in general. It feels very live. It feels very full of life and colorful. And yeah, this is just a great project from the Australian artist here. And I'm, I'm once again, I'm excited to see what he's got going forward in the future um, because this was a great project. And of course, Pitchfork did not review it because they are not uh, with the times and they're not doing their job. So 
yeah. Coming in at number eight here, we have Vince Staples' Self-Titled. I feel like this is an album that kind of went under the rug here and it's kind of not being talked about by a lot of people. Um, I think this is a great album from Vince Staples. Obviously, it's kind of a departure from his usual style. The vocals are a lot more laid back and chill, especially the beats as well. But I think Vince just does a, a super good job of this doing this sound. Um, the production by Kenny Beats is amazing throughout this album. I love Vince's rapping and lyricism on this album as well. And I like it. Not everything has to be in your face, loud, like exuberant. Is that the right word? I don't know, man. There's something about this, this album. I love the hooks on it. A lot of these are very catchy um, and they're just a bunch of nice chill vibe tracks. So yeah, production's great. Rapping is great. Favorite tracks are probably Are You With That? Sun Downtown and Take Me Home. And the uh, the good old Pitchfork boys gave this, I mean, Dylan Green to be s specific here, gave this a 7.3. I mean, that's not the most disrespectful score. I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm overrating these albums, but it's my list, so yeah, 7.3 hard disagree. All right, coming in at number seven here, we have Floating Points and Pharaoh Sanders and the London Symphony Orchestra with Promises. This is probably the most beautiful album this year and peaceful and calm. Um, it's a great mix of electronic, ambient, jazz, and classical stuff. Um, I just love, I mean, it's it doesn't even really feel like an album with different tracks. It just feels like one long piece, if that makes sense. There's different movements, of course, but they all kind of flow into each other really well. And it all kind of builds on this, this same chord that goes throughout the entire thing, but each movement builds on it in a different way introducing different instruments and different melodies and just different stuff in general. There's some vocals at some points, but it's mostly instrumental. Um, it's super peaceful, like I said, serene, calming, um, beautiful, but also haunting at times as well with some of the, the minor melodies kind of going on. Fave tracks from this are the whole thing because it's, like I said, it feels like one long track. But if I had to pick a movement, specifically movement six, I think the string sections on that are just, <sighs> they're they're really good and it's probably one of my favorite songs of the year and yeah pitchfork actually gave this a nine which hey i respect it i think that's that's a fair score this is a great album um so nine you did a good job pitchfork you did good all right coming in at number six we have one of the the fantano tens this year this is spelling with the turning wheel this is of course my introduction spelling um and it's it's a really great project um it's very disney music-esque but like in the best way possible. But like I said in my reaction to it, it doesn't ever feel like it goes over the top to the point where it's kind of cringy and forced and over dramatic. Um, I think it finds a good balance of that Disney level kind of singing. The production is pristine uh, for a lot of this. It's, it's just amazing. The vocals are flawless, amazing. She's a great, talented singer. And yeah, her theatrical vocals just transport you to a different place and along with the, the pristine and amazing production, um, it's great. This is kind of my like introduction to art pop as well. Um, and it's definitely a genre that I'm gonna look into more because I definitely enjoyed it. And Boys at School is probably in contention for my song of the year. Great track. Some other favorites from this are Queen of Wands, Revolution, and Sweet Talk. Pitchfork gave this a 7.5, which, okay. Uh, Daniel Felsenthal, 7.5. Okay, that hurts. All right, we're going into the top five here. Coming in at number five, we have Tyler, the creator with Call Me If You Get Lost. I liked this album on a first listen, but it definitely has grown on me quite a bit. Uh, I didn't know how to feel about DJ drama at first, but now I feel like it definitely adds to the kind of old school mixtape feel of this project. Uh, Tyler gets back to his rapping roots on this, obviously following Igor and Flower Boy. A bunch of different genres and sounds on here, R&B, Bossa Nova, straight, classic hip hop and it's it really comes across as like a Tyler Flex album but it's like in the best way possible where it doesn't come across as arrogant or any way like that it just feels like he's earned this and he deserves to flex a little bit and it's it's in a way where you genu genuinely feel happy for him and where he's gotten and of course he did most of if not all the production on here which is just very impressive and he has his own little aesthetic to go with it with the the videos the cover it's Tyler you know what you're gonna get on the creative side of things. Uh, favorite tracks from this are Car Corso, What's Your Name, and Massa. Those are three great tracks from this project. Pitchfork actually gave this an 8.4, which is fair. It's fair. I would probably give it a little bit higher because um, it has grown on me, but not the worst score ever. All right, coming in at number four, we have Claro Sling. Now this might seem a little bit high for some people, but I just really enjoyed this record. This was my intro to Claro. 
um, and I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of a big Claro fan now. Uh, I think she just has a really calming and beautiful voice, and it's just, overall, the record is very calming. I know Nick is green, Nick is not green said this in one of his videos too, that he put this on to fall asleep, and I did that a lot this year too, because it is very calming, very just gentle. Um, and the production by Jack Antonoff is great. I love the, the live instrumentation feel of this record. Songwriting is pretty good throughout as well. Um, it feels very natural. It's, it's very soothing and calming, like I said. Um, and I don't know how I haven't heard of Claro until this year because she's got some, some definite talent. Um, I still need to check out her previous album, which I will do at some point. But yeah, I loved Sling. This was a great project. Favorite tracks from this are probably Amiibo. Uh, Amiibo? Amoeba. There we go. Smart in the brain. I'm smart. Uh, Blouse, Harbor, Wade, and Joni. Some of the some of the standout tracks from here. Pitchfork gave this a 7.4, which you guessed it. I'm gonna say is disrespectful because I liked it. So, Cat Zhang, uh, you suck because you don't have the same taste as me. Boom, roasted. All right, coming in at number three, we have Roadrunner, New Light, New Machine from Brockhampton. The boys are back with this album. Joba was great on this record. Kevin was great on this record. Uh, the record really centered around Joba's and his father's uh, suicide, of course, which is a very tough subject. And some of the tracks on here that cover it, like The Light and The Light Part 2, are just tough to listen to, but they're, they're great tracks as well. Um, great features on this from Danny Brown to Peggy, ASAP Rocky, ASAP Ferg, and a lot more. Um, there are some, some not so great tracks on here like Count On Me and Old News and I'll Take You On. Those are probably my three least favorite, but there's also some classic Brock Hampton bangers on here like Don't Shoot Up The Party. Uh, Windows is a great like six minute track with all the members in it with a great beat, super entertaining. Um, it definitely doesn't get boring for that six minute runtime. Um, and some of their, their best songs ever, like I said, like Don't Shoot Out The Party, the, the, the primal, the visceral feel of that track is amazing and the lyrical content is amazing as well. Um, and The Light as well, like I said, Joba's verse on there. The beat on The Light, oh my gosh, bro. The beat on The Light is one of the best beats I feel like I've ever heard. Romil Jabari, all the producers that did production on this record, shout out to you guys because the production on this record is absolutely amazing. The boys are back with this record. It feels like that that energy that we had in the Saturation series. Obviously, I liked Ginger, but this this kind of feels like a return to form for Brockhampton, and it's, it's one of my favorite of the year. It's great. Uh, Pitchfork gave this a 7.4, which... I mean, okay, I don't even know what to say at this point. That's just, I mean, I don't know how you can listen to the light and say that, like even the light on its own, if there was just doo-doo tracks all around the light, it's it's still at least like a, a 7.5, so. All right, coming in at number two, we're in the top two now. We have Black Midi with Cavalcade, of course. I just got into Black Midi this year, of course. I listened to Schlagenheim before this, loved that record. And I think this album is an even better and more realized version of that as well. It's got more emotional variety. Obviously, Schlagenheim was very chaotic, aggressive, uh, fast-paced. I feel like this has some of that fast-paced energy, but it also mixes it with some softer, more chill tracks as well. And it just, it's, it feels like a more all-around project. From the avant-garde kind of jazz on John L to the somber side with, uh, with the ballad Marlene Dietrich, however you say it. Um, I think once again, it just does a great job of mixing those two sounds. The slow burner diamond stuff um, is probably one of my favorite tracks on this, this album. An extremely satisfying outro of that track. And slow, slow is on here, which is probably one of my favorite songs of the year. Overall, the instrumentation, the vocals are very unique by Jordy, of course and they're just very talented. Um, at times it can be a lot to take in, but once you get used to it, you can just kind of appreciate the greatness that we have going on here and just the technical ability of these musicians. Um, and like I said, it's, it's just a well-rounded, it flows really well, and it, it's just a great project. Favorite tracks from this are probably Slow, Diamond Stuff, and Ascending Forth. In my initial reaction, Ascending Forth was one of, one of my least favorite, but it has grown on me like, a lot to the point where it's one of my favorites. It's genius. These boys are genius. Pitchfork gave this an eight, which I don't even care at this point. It's disrespectful. It's a nine at least. All right, we're at number one. This is my favorite album of the year. This might be a little bit of a, a basic pick, but I think it's it's deserved all the hype that it's gotten. This is Little Sims with Sometimes I Might Be Introvert. This was my intro to Little Sims. Um, the production is great. This kind of gave me the same feel in terms of the concept, the size, just how good it is to uh, to pimp a butterfly. 
I really think this is like the modern day to pimp a butterfly. Obviously it's, it doesn't sound the same, but it just kind of gave me that same feeling in the sense that it was a hip hop album that was grand and very adventurous and conceptual, very well-rounded. And I don't know, man, it just gave me that feeling. Yeah, very cinematic, theatrical, dramatic production, strings, theatrical interludes, which Fantano didn't like. I found them very fitting and I actually liked them. Uh, like I said, great use of choir vocals, strings, harp, brass sections, guitars, more tribal and more like, I guess tribal's the word, drums. It's definitely the most like theatrical hip hop album I've heard. Um, it's a great depiction of what being an introvert actually is. Um, and it's just, it just feels like a very personal album for um, Little Sims. And I wrote down here too, very reminiscent of T-Pab with the skits and interludes kind of being like the poem. And that's what kind of really reminded me of T-Pab is obviously with T-Pab, you have the poem at the end of each track tying the whole thing together. The skits on this and the interludes kind of felt similar to that. And once again, it has that grand feel. Little Sims is a great rapper. The lyrics throughout this thing are great. The production, the song structures are interesting. Um, and I think it deserves all the hype that it's gotten. Some people say it's overrated. I don't care, I love it. Um, favorite tracks are Introvert, I Love You, I Hate You, Point and Kill and Misunderstood. Um, just a great, great project from Little Sims. And I think it's definitely worth the praise it's gotten and it definitely deserves to be at number one. And it's it's my favorite album of the year. That's great. Pitchfork gave it a 7.7. .7. Pitchfork? Oh, you suck. You suck, bro. Who, who did this? Who did this? Will Pritchard. All right, let me just get off this, this awful site. Um, yeah, that's gonna do it. Those were my top 15 albums of the year. Um, I, it's, it's, I know it's a pretty basic list, but honestly, I don't care. These are my, these are my favorite albums of the year. Once again, I can't listen to every album that comes out because that would be insane and I would go insane. So let me know your list down below. Let me know if you heavily disagree with anything on this list. Obviously as times goes on, some of these, these rankings can change because my, your opinions on music can change quite a bit as you listen to stuff more and all that. So yeah, it was a great year for music. Tons of great albums. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, can't wait to do some more album reactions in 2020 or 2022 now. 2021, it was a great year for music at least. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe, like, and uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.